Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Devane County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 97. This is the Friday, April 22nd, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off as usual with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, The Investigator by John Sanford. Letty Davenport, the adopted daughter of Lucas Davenport, looks into oil thefts in Texas. At number two, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife, raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number three, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. At number four, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series, and she uncovers a horrifying truth. And at number five, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. A movie icon recounts stories of her loves and career to a struggling magazine writer. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, Freezing Order by Bill Broder. The author of Red Notice tells his story of becoming Vladimir Putin's enemy by uncovering a 230 million tax refund scheme. At number two, the Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How Trauma Affects the Body and Mind and Innovative Treatments for Recovery. At number three, Hello Molly by Molly Shannon with Sean Wilsley. The comedic actor shares stories of family tragedy and her years as a star of Saturday Night Live. At number four, Left on Tenth by Delia Efron. The author and screenwriter describes losing her sister and husband to cancer, finding love again, and receiving a leukemia diagnosis, which by the way, she did survive. And at number five, Bittersweet by Susan Cain. The author of Quiet suggests ways to embrace loss and suffering within ourselves and others. And just as an end note about the Delia Efron book, she was recently interviewed by Terry Gross on NPR's Fresh Air. It was a very interesting interview. So if you're interested in it, you could Google Delia Efron and Fresh Air and you'll come up with the interview online. Our first recommended read for this week is the Tracy Clark mystery, Borrowed Time. Clark's fine sequel to 2018's Broken Places finds Chicago PI Cassandra Raines still reeling from personal losses and thus reluctant to listen when an unusual case comes her way. Jung Bison who delivers sandwiches for her favorite food haunt, says that the recent suicide of a friend, Tim Ayers, was actually murder. The disgraced son of a prominent family, Tim was found floating in Lake Michigan, miles from his drifting yacht. Under pressure from the family's attorneys, 
the police quickly close the case. When Cass expresses little interest, Zheng takes matters into his own hands and stirs up a hornet's nest of trouble. Determined to protect Zheng and dig a little deeper into what happened to Tim, Cass uncovers a murky froth of lies, greed, and depravity neither she nor Zheng expected. The delivery of a particularly gruesome present to Cass's door raises the stakes. The evocative descriptions of the city add color to the action. Cass is a worthy addition to the pantheon of Chicago sleuths. And on a reader's note, if you'd like to start reading the series from the beginning, you want to check out book one, which is the previously mentioned title, Broken Places. Our second recommended read for this week is also a mystery. I'm on a mystery kick this week. It's the Elsa Hart mystery, The Cabinets of Barnaby, Maine. Intellectual curiosity serves an aspiring botanist well when she investigates the baffling murder of a mentor. London, 1703. In response to her letter of inquiry, Lady Cecily Kay receives an invitation to visit the fashionable residence of Sir Barnaby Maine in Bloomsbury Square. Not only does Maine have an impressive collection of books, jewels, and artifacts from all over the world, but his cabinets of flora, which Cecily will have a week to examine, are equally notable. The residence itself is meticulously organized, serpent room, bird room, beast room, etc. When they go looking for Maine in his study, Cecily and a handful of other guests discover the corpse of their ill-tempered host, along with a frenzied Walter Dinley, one of the other guests, who declares that he killed Maine after a quarrel. The case seems open and shut, but Cecily, who's not so sure, secretly examines the murder scene and begins questioning the household staff. The arrival of the imperious Lady Maine, who seems unmoved by her husband's death, adds a twist she won't inherit her husband's priceless collection. Instead, it will go to his courtly, amiable friend Giles Inwood. The sudden return of guest Otto Helm, who had left before dinner and the murder, makes Cecily even more suspicious, especially when he claims to have been assaulted and robbed. The solution is complex, but Cecily is determined to find it in this series debut from the author of the trio of Lydu Mysteries. Hart's juicy character portraits and graceful prose make for a delightful period whodunit. And that is the Kirkus Review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is a romantic thriller. It's Thief of Hearts by Tess Gerritsen. And I have to say, before I get into what this is about, that it occurred to me while I was putting together this edition of Library Connections that I don't often recommend romances or romantic thrillers. And that's because, well, it's because they're not my cup of tea, but they are very popular and I have to remember to include one every so often, as I am doing this week. So, on to the plot of Thief of Hearts. The audiobook is read by Karen Cass. So here we go. Reformed cat burglar Clea Rice has witnessed enough crime to put her on the straight and narrow. But little does she suspect that her search for justice will land her in the arms of a wealthy English gentleman. As her attraction to Jordan Tavistock grows, so does the danger. Now her biggest concern isn't whether a cat burglar, 
and a proper gentleman can find happiness, it's whether they'll survive long enough to find out. And on a listener's note, this is the second book in a two-book series. If you'd like to start reading or listening from the beginning, check out book one, which is titled In Their Footsteps. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the new Joyce St. Anthony mystery, Front Page Murder. The audio is read by Aaron Dean. Set in 1942, this entertaining series launch from St. Anthony introduces Irene Ingram, the editor-in-chief of a newspaper in Progress, Pennsylvania, a job she took over from her father after he left for the Pacific to be a war correspondent. When beauty shop owner Ava Dempsey phones Irene to say Sam Markowitz's hardware store across the street, has just been robbed, Irene sends reporter Mo Bauer to investigate. Irene later learns that the hardware store wasn't actually robbed, but that someone did leave an anti-Semitic message for Sam, a Jewish refugee from Nazi Germany, written on a piece of cardboard. When Mo fails to show up to interview either Ava or Sam, Irene goes to Mo's house where she finds him dead at the foot of his cellar stairs. What appears to be an accident turns into a murder case. St. Anthony splendidly evokes the era through such details as the town's Victory Garden and Woolworth's lunch counter, as she highlights the impact of the war on traditional women's roles. Fans of Jacqueline Winspear will want to see more of the talented and intelligent Irene. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is season one of The After Party, starring Tiffany Haddish, Sam Richardson, and Zoe Chow. You can stream this from Apple TV Plus. The After Party takes a simple concept a murder mystery whodunit, and turns it on its head, with each episode told from a different point of view and unfolding as a completely different genre of the show. That can lead to some uneven episodes, but the core cast, topped by Sam Richardson and Tiffany Haddish, make the after party worth sticking around to solve. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the first season of the TV series Pachinko, starring Jin Ha, Soji Arai, and Lee Min Ho. You can stream this one from Apple TV+. Based on Min Jin Lee's 2017 novel of the same name, Pachinko is a sprawling, masterfully drawn drama that jumps between cities languages, and generations to tell the story of one Korean family's slow, steady rise. Delicately melding history lessons with soap opera storylines, Pacheco is an epic tale, one that you'll want to keep going well beyond the eight-episode season on Apple TV+. And that's the Boston.com review. Our third streaming recommendation for this week is the miniseries, A Very British Scandal, from 2021. The series was created by Sarah Phelps and stars Claire Foy and Paul Bettany. You can stream it now from Amazon Prime Video. A Very British Scandal stars Emmy nominee Paul Bettany and Emmy winner Claire Foy as the Duke and Duchess of Argyle. The miniseries documents the real-life story of the Duke and Duchess as they went through a divorce that became one of the most public and scandalous legal cases in 1960s Britain. And that's a really short description, so I'm going to add some fun facts. The Duke and Duchess of Argyle in question, 
are the 11th Duke of Argyll, Ian Campbell, and his third wife, Margaret Wyman. That's W-H-I-G-H-A-M. Second fun fact, the current holder of the title, Duke of Argyll, is Torquil Campbell, the 13th Duke of Argyll. He is the grandson of the 11th Duke by his eldest son, the 12th Duke, who was also named Ian. But the current Duke of Argyll, Torquil, is not a grandson of Margaret Wyman. He is instead the grandson of the Duke's second wife, Louise Hollingsworth Morris. So if you want some drama and scandal with great lineage stuff going on too, check out a very British scandal. Moving on to our Hoopla recommendation for the week, it's the classic 1945 film, Dead of Night, starring Melvin Johns, Roland Culver, and Mary Morrell. And here's the plot. An architect senses impending doom as his half-remembered recurring dream turns into reality. The guests at the country house encourage him to stay as they take turns telling supernatural tales. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, for a short listing of library programs and events for the week in front of us, that's the week of April 25th through the 30th, 2022. This information is also found online via the library's website. Just go to ssclibrary.org and click on the prominent calendar link on our homepage. And just a heads up note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified. You can register for programs through the library's website, by calling the library, or by dropping by. On Monday, April 25th in library land, we've got one program from 5 to 7 p.m. It's the rescheduled April Crafting with Kimberly Cardboard Relief Art. You do have to pre-register for this program. You get a crafting kit at the library and then the link for the online portion of the program. And so you can go home and from 5 to 7 p.m. you can tune in online and craft with Kimberly. On Tuesday, April 26th in library land, we have five programs to bring your attention to. The first is Adult Scrabble. That runs from 9 to 11 a.m. in the library's reading room. The second program is Coffee, Tea, and English Online Vocabulary, a Zoom program, which runs from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. And then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., we have Miss Sue's Online Storytime. The location of this is now hybrid. You can join via the library's Facebook page or in person at Fallbrook Park. Then from 10.30 to 11 a.m. we have Coffee, Tea, and English Online Conversation, another Zoom program. Our final program on Tuesday, April 26th is actually full. This is for kids. It's the monthly Junior Chef program. This month they're doing edible bird's nests. It is full, so you can't register for this month's program. But I want to bring it to your attention because it's a fun series and it is monthly. So if you've got kids at home that like to cook, check our calendar of events for the upcoming months, say May, June, July, and register for the series as soon as possible so your kids can participate. On April 27th in Library Land, we've got three programs. From 12 to 1 p.m. is Sticky Notes, the thematic book club online. This is a Zoom program, so of course you have to register to get the link. And for this program, you simply pick a book to read related to the monthly theme in some way. It could be any kind of a book, fiction, nonfiction, or any genre. And then you just join in and tell the group about the book, what you liked about it, what you didn't, etc. Our second program on Wednesday, April 27th, is the weekly May Zhang, which is held at the library from 1 to 3 p.m. And then in the evening from 6 to 8, we have the Corning Adult Writers Group, which is a hybrid program, both at the library and via Zoom. And you contact Michelle Wells at the library to register. On Thursday, April 28th in library land, we have one program, Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club. This is a Zoom program that runs from 10 to 1130 a.m. 
Then on Friday, April 29th in Library Land, we've got three programs to bring your attention to. The first is Science Time with Miss Abby, which is a Facebook Live program and runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. Then from 1 to 1.30 p.m., the new edition of Library Connections comes out, and the location for that is both Facebook and YouTube on demand. Then finally, from 4 to 5 p.m., we have a young adult program, Improv Camp Miniseries 1. It's an online program, and you have to register to get the online link. Then on Saturday, April 30th, our final program for next week is the Zentangle Method of Drawing with Gail Lewis. The location is at the library from 1 to 3 p.m. And here are our library program contacts. Feel free to give us a call or send us an email if you have questions about any of the programs. So this next section is about the library, generally speaking, of course. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. You can send me an email. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org. That's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. Or you can always drop by the library. Library hours, an important thing to know. The library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we're closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of useful information on our website. To offer you a Cliff Notes version today, I'm just going to talk about three sections of our homepage that will allow you to access cool stuff. The first is the link that says Calendar on our homepage. If you click that or tap it, you'll be redirected to our calendar of events where you can register for programs and see what's going on both in the library and also the remote programming we have. If you click on the word catalogs, a menu will open that will allow you to access all the library's catalogs for both physical content like print books and digital content like eBooks. And then if you click on the resources menu link seen at the top of the page there, also bordered in red, a menu will open and you can do a bunch of stuff through that menu, you can register to vote. You can access anti-racism resources. But today I wanna to direct you to the research and learning page on our website. So that's the third option on the resources menu, research and learning. And if you click or tap that, the research and learning page will display. And this lists some of the most popular databases that we offer, otherwise known as online research resources. But I find that a mouthful. So basically, these are credible research resources, which I'm going to refer to as databases from now on. And these are available to you as a card holder, but they're not free to everyone everywhere. You get them as a card holder, but the library and or the library system pays for these. And through our website, through the research and learning page on our website, you find some of the most popular ones you can access, including Mango Languages, if you want to learn another language even Pirate, and the Heritage Quest resource or database, and that's for genealogical research. And those are great resources. And if you're going to do really in-depth research, though, you want to go all the way down to the bottom of the page. In the last little paragraph there, it says, would you like to find more databases and resources? And then below that little paragraph in purple, it says, find the complete list of STLS databases here. That's the link you want to click on if you're doing in-depth research. It's going to redirect you to the databases page on the STLS website. And you see a photo of the top portion of that page on the right side of your screen. So here we see a large portion of the list of databases that you can access for in-depth research on tons of topics, criminal justice, the culinary arts, diversity, gender studies. There's a health database. If you want to do health research, there's one on opposing viewpoints. If you have to write a paper on a subject that has two sides to the story, which is usually the case, you can look at that. There are several academic resources. If you're a college or high school student doing research, there's even one on gardening and landscaping, on the hospitality industry, 
and a home improvement collection too. So lots of stuff on the STLS databases page, which you can access through our website, or you can go directly to that page by typing www.stls.org forward slash databases into your web browser. StarCAD and the BookMine app. StarCAD is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, otherwise known as STLS. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Shimong, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can access StarCAT online at starcat.stls.org. That's S-T-A-R-C-A-T dot S-T-L-S dot org. Or, as you might imagine, there's an app for that. It's called BookMine, and it's spelled a little differently. It's B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E, and that will give you direct access to StarCAT through your mobile device, and you can find the BookMine app in your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app, Libby. The Digital Catalog 2 is available to all card holders of all Southern Tier Library System member libraries, and you can find it online at stls.overdrive.com, or you can download the Libby app found in your app store to your mobile device. The Digital Catalog features eBooks, audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features eBooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking and watching this and you're thinking, well, why is it just for Corning Library card holders or SSC Library card holders. That's because this particular service, Hoopla, is one that the Southeast Steuben County Library pays for. The others, the Digital Catalog and of course StarCat, are collection-wide catalogs and all member libraries contribute to them. So that's what the difference is. If you want to check out the Hoopla Catalog online, you go to hooplaDigital.com and of course there's an app, Hoopla, for your mobile device. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library services, you are welcome always to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library through social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. The library has five blogs we'd like to draw your attention to. There's the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at sscl.book.club, and is pretty much what you would expect. It's information about the monthly Book Club for Adults. There's the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog, which is found at corningnyhistory.com. Creation Stationery, the Creative Makerspace blog, found at creationstationary.com. Library blogs. The library has five blogs we'd like to draw your attention to. There's the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at sscl.book.club, and is pretty much what you would expect. It's information about the monthly Book Club for Adults. There's the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog, which is found at CorningNYHistory.com. Creation Stationery, the Creative Makerspace blog, found at CreationStationery.com. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, which is found at StoryMusings.blogspot.com. And Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which you may have guessed is hosted by yours truly, which is found at ssctech.com.
and briefly our references of the week and our catalog information. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.